everybody. Hi. We are back with day two of our live stream. Uh, my name is Melissa Decker. And I'm Nicole Litt. And together we are Party of One Studio, a creative studio based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, so this is our second day. Yesterday we talked a little bit about how we started our business together mm -hmm. and how we use personal projects and creative collaboration to get new work. Um, so we're going to be finishing that up a little bit today, but also talking a little bit about our client work and yeah. how we present our ideas to our clients, um, how we communicate you know, our whole process with them, and we'll be showing you some decks as well as going into um, our photoshopping and um, some techniques for our client work. Yes. Um, but yes. first, um, we do have chat and win again today. Yes. So Stu uh, stay tuned in for that <laughs> and definitely stay active in the chat um, and you'll have the chance to win uh, 100 die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Um, also, we have a pretty packed schedule, so yep. I know that they already kicked off the creative challenge with Voodoo Val. Um, but We're they will looking be, forward to seeing those yeah. later. Um, we'll be with you until 1130 and then Sam Anderson with a creative challenge and another case study day two with Eric Sue. so stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. Um, and for the creative challenge today, um, I believe it is using the patch tool and simple retouching techniques to turn a selfie into a professional portrait. Yes. Um, so be sure to submit those in Discord and we're really excited to see what you submit and also see photos of you because we're just seeing you in the chat. So that'll be a good way to get to know everybody. Yeah, hi chat, nice <laughs> to see you. <laughs> hey Noor, hi Flippa. <laughs> <laughs> hey Justin. Hi, everybody. Um, so in case you didn't tune in yesterday, we'll just yeah. give you a quick little recap of who we are. Oh, let's look at Melissa's screen. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, we are Party of One. We are based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, we have a studio in Greenpoint. And we do a lot of work um, with photography using custom set design yep. and um, props in order to create our final visual images. Mm -hmm. um, so we can yeah, talk a little bit about... follow along with us <laughs> too on Instagram. And yeah. Yeah. But I guess we can do a really quick yeah. recap of how we kind of started our studio sure. in case you didn't tune in yesterday. Um, so just a little bit about me. I am from Austin, Texas. Um, I went to um, Pratt Institute for undergrad in New York and studied communication design. I bounced around a little bit, fine art and illustration, um, and ended up in ComD. And um, after doing a couple internships in a few different fields in advertising and in print design, um, I got the opportunity to start working at Etsy, which is where I met Nicole. Yeah. And she was one of the first people that interviewed me for joining the team. We were pretty small at that time, um, but the team really grew um, over the course of the you know, almost four years that I was there and a bit longer for Nicole. Yeah, about five years. Mm -hmm. And we're really in the trenches yeah, together there. Yeah, we really were. <laughs> and um, that was, um, okay, just to backtrack a touch. Uh, yeah, I studied fine art at Cooper Union in New York City, um, and I had sort of a winding path to design. So. Um, by the time I was at Etsy, I was definitely incorporating a lot of art techniques into the design work um, that I was doing for the team. And Melissa really caught my eye because her beautiful typography was coupled with some really lovely hand-built um, photographed uh, sets and things like that. So um, it made for a really good mix for us and we wound up working very closely uh, together on some larger campaigns. Um, and yeah, and we also at that time, I think we really learned how to work together. So that was a really good base for us when we later decided to form our studio. Um, before we did that, we both spent some time working independently, freelancing. I kind of leaned into an illustration path and Melissa was doing more traditional design, but really we were kind of walking a parallel line. So it only made sense for us to join forces. Mm -hmm. yeah, so after working independently, um, we decided to start our studio, Party of One, which was kind of the, um, it, it came out of doing a lot of personal work together, as I mentioned yesterday, and um, really finding a lot of opportunities to infuse our collaborative work with the elements that we wanted to have people hire us for. Yeah. Um, so Party of One was kind of born through that, and we are two years into our studio together. Yep. Um, and yeah, and we're also here really today to answer questions about that, and we'll yeah. be checking with the chat to sort of talk about, yeah, what it's like to run a studio, and as we said, today our focus is really more on working with clients and how that process differs than what we described yesterday. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes in terms of communications and commuting kind of 
communicating concepts that you won't see on our website, but we're really excited to share with you. Yeah. Um, but maybe before we get into yeah. all that, we do want to finish up uh, the personal project that we were working on yesterday. Oh, perhaps we should maybe walk through and share a little bit of our work first. Oh, think? yeah, let's do yeah, that. Yeah, let's do that. So we can hop over to my screen. Um, so this is what we're talking about when we say we love color and we like <laughs> making uh, sets and we do a lot of photographic design. Um, we... We tend yeah. to work a lot with um, brands and products, down. creating sets for them for different types of campaigns, mm -hmm. as well as editorial design, um, which we're going to be going into a few examples of that today. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned before, we do a lot of personal projects together, which often leads into paid client work, which is awesome. Um, so yesterday, we showed you how we edited yes. that image there, right the here. fire fingers, which we're going to be adding a little bit of animation to today. Yeah. And um, we'll also be going into some of our process for client work as well. Yeah, um, so let's get back because process can, you know, come in all forms. Um, and this is a really, sorry for the quick scroll there, <laughs> this is a really process heavy both in concept but also in build. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I think it's still on stands now, um, cover and an interior spread for Foreign poly Policy magazine. So. This is interesting too under the lens of Photoshop because so much of this was made in real life, but we definitely used a lot of Photoshop in the final. So it's kind of large on the screen, but you can see we are talking about climate change here and we really wanted to um, bring to life some of the dire uh, <laughs> things that we're facing, but also there's a hopeful side where um, what the article really discusses is some unlikely heroes. So this was the cover and this is the interior. And then this is kind of a fun thing to see. We went through a lot of rounds um, mm -hmm. with concepting for this one. Um, just really trying to capture that, that line. And we do do a little bit of animation. This was for Foreign Policy's social stream. But this is us in the studio. So that <laughs> cracked earth that you see was actually built. Um, we use some, we recycle a lot of materials. I save a lot of packaging materials. And this was some foam that came with a piece that was delivered and chopped it up into this shatter, kind of like a glass shatter, and then covered with clay um, that and really had a nice, yeah, it had a really nice uh, crackle effect and used a ton of different spices to create <laughs> that texture and tone and a little bit of paint. We used some model trees. I used some recycled <laughs> plastic bags to add water, um, all leading to here. And you'll see in that process that we don't have the type. The type was actually 100% added in post in Photoshop. I think we had a vector type layout that we created in Illustrator and that was superimposed. And all of the textures within that that you'll see here were brought in by grabbing parts of the actual set and using different opacity layers to create that. Yeah, so this is a great example of something that is really hard to communicate our exact process to clients when we're presenting yeah. this idea. We can show them a sketch, um, we can show them colors, we can explain how we're thinking about approaching the project, but translating something like this um, can be really difficult. So we love showing um, behind the scenes with our work like this and really trying to explain the process as much as possible to clients yeah. um, so that they, you know, they get how much work goes into it, but also they understand how limiting it might be to create changes when you're working on something that yes. is three-dimensional and real. Um, and being shot in real life. Absolutely. And we do um, share often, I think, the process in our Instagram feed mm -hmm. and then sometimes in our stories as well, just to sort of share like what happens. And yeah, it's always good to flesh out and really reveal all that you've done. Like this, actually just funny, was <laughs> very, very, very tiny. And um, yeah, so small. And again, we use some plaster and clay to build out the, the earth forms and spices to cover a little bit of sand. But all of this speckle that you see around is not really posed. There was some collaging that um, went on with different 
frames. I think we showed this yesterday as well. We will take many shots and we mm -hmm. sometimes composite them all together. But it was actually me holding a smoke machine in one hand and blowing glitter with another. <laughs> so it was pretty wild, but it was nice um, to create something completely unique for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one example of sort of an in-depth um, mm -hmm. process to get to where you know we landed for the client. Um, sure. One other example, which we'll be showing some of the retouching for later today, is um, a project that we did for Mercedes-Benz, which maybe we can show the final. Why don't we go on up to that? Yeah. So this was a partnership um, with Mercedes-Benz, and I can show you just by scrolling down a little bit of the process that went into these final pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, so this was something which we'll, we'll show you um, the full brief later on, mm -hmm. but ultimately the clients wanted us to create a timeline of images showcasing cars from different decades. So present day, the 80s, the 60s, and the 50s. Um, so they just wanted some sort of visual interpretation of that brief. Um, they had seen our work and they requested a few images that they liked, you know, the color saturation or some of the materials, but they really left it up to us in terms of how we wanted to execute. Um, so in a little bit, we're going to show you all of the process that went into um, showing these concepts, doing the sketches for it, um, doing color mock-ups so that the client can really understand what they're getting, mm -hmm. and then of course creating all of these pieces, which I just realized I did not bring those <laughs> oh, columns. That's okay. You can see a little image yeah. of um, you know how it's fun small to see. all of these yeah. things are. So we're working with model cars again. We're going to really dig into this in, in more depth, but it's always. I mean, I think it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> it's always neat to see like what's really behind, and you can see sometimes. This final, you know, can look very glossy and and perfected, and we do so much of that in Photoshop. But the actual forms, we used a lot of paper for this. Mm -hmm. Yep, paper craft. It's mm -hmm. a mixture of things, really. Like the the scene that you see on the right is entirely made out of paper, yep. and the one on the left is a mixture of you know cardboard tubing and actually some um, rubber that is kind of corrugated, so it looks like these columns. Um, yeah. And I think it's probably used for. I don't know, kitchen finishing or something yeah. like that. It was a material yeah. that we found at Canal Plastics in, in um, yeah. New York. In New York. So we, we really find our materials, you know, wherever All we over. can. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this ran okay. on Mercedes Be Mercedes Benz's oh, yeah. social feed. Um, For sure. And I actually did notice some comments on there that people thought this was CGI. So yeah. we'll be yeah. showing you how it is not CGI. It's yeah. actually all. No, not made. 3D design, all hand built and photographed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if we have any other questions, but yeah. I can start pulling up actually the project that we worked on yesterday, which um, was yep. a personal project, and I think it's pretty appropriate for us to finish it up today on October 1st because yes. it Ooh. is very... We can scoot um, on over to Melissa's <laughs> computer for that. It is an autumn-themed image and something that we used um, to, you know, to seek out new business um, and to send out as newsletters and also through social um, just to get people excited about what we do and who we are and the type of work that we create. Um, so I'm going to be pulling up the file that we worked on yesterday Yeah. and um, adding a little bit of animation to it, which is not something that we had initially done, um, but I think now will just be a good way of um, coming back to that for the fall season. Yeah, fun. So yeah, so just, yeah, for those who are tuning in today and weren't with us yesterday, mm -hmm. um, just recapping again, we use a lot of promotional, uh, we create a lot of original work for pro promotional means and we share them in newsletters or on social and this is a portrait of Melissa and myself mm -hmm. um, and we're just showing a little bit of a spark we wanted something really that had a nice autumnal warm feeling um, but as I think I just showed a little bit of our studio we really do shoot mostly inside our studio so we had to do a lot to create that atmosphere and that it includes having real flame. We really had a pole in the center there that we retouched mm -hmm. out yesterday with a little ball of paper towel that we lit on fire. And um, we had some plates that we composited. We liked one hand from one image, one hand from another. We put those together in this. And then we had a plate with smoke. We added the smoke and finally we added the flame. And then we do a final color pass to mm -hmm. really bring it all to life. So if you're curious about some of the details within that, you can mm -hmm. check out our live stream from yesterday where we go into all the specifics of the file. Um, but today what we're gonna do is just animate that flame and add a little bit something extra um, to share. Oh, and we have a question here. So there's a question, what is the advantage to not do these in uh, CGI? And I think that's a really good question. I think making things in real life, um, 
With our backgrounds, it's just personally very satisfying, but you do have perhaps more restriction. I think this is just a comfort zone that we live in, honestly, and that we've developed. So we really enjoyed, yesterday we described actually crafting those sleeves and crafting the scene. Um, but, you know, I totally think there's a lot of very beautiful work being mm -hmm. done. Yeah, I think for us, programs. we've always kind of appreciated that little touch of the handmade that if you look a little bit more closely at the image, you can kind of tell that someone was in there and it's not absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, so I do think that's the advantage of um, yeah. us doing it the way that we do it. Again, also it is just a matter of um, you know, what we do best. And I think yeah. we are much more comfortable crafting things in real life than yeah. we are. We do not know how to do CGI. Yeah, we That's just, just don't. real. Yeah. <laughs> We're um, friends, we can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so going into this file, what I've mm -hmm. done is I've created a base layer here with just our fingers and the final retouching as well as all of the color tweaks. Yep. And um, I've added the flame as its own layer, yeah. which is just um, lightened and filter in Photoshop so that all of the um, black behind the flame has been removed and the smoke is also on its own layer. So I think for this, what I might wanna try is actually just to move that opacity of that smoke down so that we can focus more on the flame for this animation. And what I'm gonna do is just make a copy of this and then go into Liquify Filter, which is something that we used quite a bit yesterday, yes. so that we can make that flame kind of dance and move around and use that as the frames for our GIF. Now there's so many different ways um, to craft a GIF in Photoshop. Um, Liquify is a really great way. Often we will have separate frames, almost shooting like a stop motion where we can compile all those together and create a natural movement. But for this, we just want something a little bit more atmospheric. Mm -hmm. Liquify is really helpful for that. Um, I've used the puppet warp tool. I've used mm -hmm. all sorts of things just to add a slight bit of motion. If we wanted something more dramatic though, definitely we would have shot each thing. Just We discussed yesterday that capturing flame is actually quite challenging um, and so this was really the best one we got with those two separate things for our fingers so we want to stick with that one for this. So what I'm doing right now is actually um, just trying to make this flame kind of look realistically like it's fluttering around which if you you know take a look at a real flame usually the base of it stays pretty static and the yeah. top is what sort of flickers around so what I'm doing is just going in I've made um, already one copy of the flame layer which I've adjusted a bit in liquify and I'm making um, a third layer to this gif and just kind of making that movement even more dramatic so I'm taking this nudge tool or forward warp tool, I guess is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And just kind of pulling this image around a bit so that it feels like it's organically kind of waving. And I don't want the um, difference between one layer or the other to be too strong. Right. So I'm not going too crazy. Um, if you're not familiar with Liquify, we love using this for these more organic shapes as yeah. well as um, often if we're making a set that has to have really perfect lines or really sharp curves. Um, it's great to sort of nudge and adjust things that are handmade and not completely perfect to be in that nice shape that you want. Yeah, and you're, you're yeah, and there's an advantage, I think, um, over the clone stamp sometimes because you're really working with the image that's actually there. Yeah. So right yeah. now I have three oh, layers. Oh, well, look at that. So Tim has a lot of really see. good tips for us. He was sharing some stuff yesterday about using camera raw files. So mm -hmm. built-in flame generator to create a custom flame from scratch. And that is something I might be interested Ooh. in looking at Honestly, in the future. That would be great, I think, for when we're working on a white background. Because yes. it is so hard to do a real flame on a white background. We really just have not been able to nail that yet. But on a dark background, it is a little bit easier. Oh, Nora has a, a question about dealing with clients while you work on that. Yeah. Perhaps I can like read that aloud. So how do you deal with clients who are like, know everything already? Okay, <laughs> and, and so a challenging client situation. Okay, and they want the job done really fast. Well, you know what? Truthfully, there are certain fields that really do have a faster turnaround time than others. So a larger campaign, it's understood um, at the onset, like when that campaign's gonna go live. So you kind of build backwards uh, a calendar and set some realistic expectations there. Um, and for editorial, it is often a very, very quick turnaround. So you, knowing that, are proposing ideas that you feel confident you can achieve during that time. And so a lot of these things are like 
learning curves. You start to understand how long things might take. Um, you know, I mean, we, in the earlier days working together, we definitely worked very long nights and weekends, and we've, we've really, you know, sort of figured out our workflow now that we can set a more manageable pace for ourselves. Um, but clients can be challenging. We have been really lucky that, and I would, uh, I really um, advise that other people do this as well, that you put out work that you feel most comfortable doing. So if people are coming to you for the work that you are sort of known for, so we're sort of known for set building and photographic design, that we can feel confident in explaining that process mm -hmm. and they are already sort of familiar. So, you know, tricky, tricky client situations can come up, but like keeping an open line of communication. And again, we're going to really jump into this when we move on to the next project where you're really fully fleshing out expectations and showing a lot of visuals so people are part of the process from the mm -hmm. beginning of the project to the end, know where they are at within that time frame, and know what to expect. So really clear communication, mm -hmm. even with a tricky client, can kind of smooth some of that. Yeah, if they feel that you're confident in what you're doing and you can yeah. really back up your choices yeah. and show exactly, you know, why things are taking a long time or why, you need, you know, a two-week process for concepting is important, I think it helps to calm clients down because usually they're just nervous that their project is going to get done in time and they don't, if it's the first time working with you, they may not know what your process is yeah. or know what to expect at all. So. Usually just being really clear with people sure. and like letting them know what to expect alleviates um, a lot of the tension that might occur with a new client. Yeah. Um, but you know, sometimes they're also just really difficult clients and the benefit of working independently is that you can choose not to work with them again. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, you know, obviously life gets in the way and you have to pay your bills, but um, hopefully <laughs> you can have a nice spread of clients and find people that you really love mm -hmm. working with. Um, that yeah. you know, understand the process and trust yeah. you also, and trust For sure. what, your, what your style is. Um, so oh, getting back great. into Tim, this. Tim image. did also share some information about how to generate those themes, so oh, that's awesome. wonderful. We're gonna try that after, thank sure. you. But with this, um, in this case, what I've done is I've just done four different flame layers, all through the liquify tool, so you can see it has this like wavy little wonky movement that's happening. Yeah. Um, and I've set the timing here to just two seconds with four different flames. Um, something I always do like to do so that the transition from the last layer and the first layer is um, smooth. In this case, it's not too bad, but I'll just do it anyway. Is kind of do like a backwards countdown. So it goes like the first four layers and then kind of goes back down. So you have that really seamless transition from um, the last layer that I you just worked on. I actually think that's such a good tip. So maybe, um, yeah, let's just talk about that again. Sometimes we have, we want a perfect loop, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like a little finessing that can go yeah. in to make that happen. And sometimes you're able to have kind of an infinite loop in the GIF and sometimes you want it to kind of go up, back up yeah. and down, up and down in terms of the layers. This one is a pretty irregular shape, yeah. so I'm not sure if it's the best example of using that, but we have it here just in case so yeah. that you can kind of see. So I think so I'm gonna- So real simple, should we export that? Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep the smoke pretty just low for this because I feel like in real life, the smoke kind of billows very slowly and Billowy smoke is a is a tricky thing to do in Liquify here because you yeah. really can tell that it's being adjusted digitally versus in real life. What I have done in the past is brought in um, a video layer, like sometimes I'll just go into Adobe Stock and I'll find mm -hmm. um, a smoke video layer if you want to have that really realistic um, moving smoke along with your animated GIF and I've dropped that in on top. But you know, for this case, since we already have this smoke layer, we're just going to leave it at a low opacity. And um, well, yeah. let's go ahead and export Just have that. a little moment. So since this file is pretty big, you can adjust the size in the GIF export, but I'm just gonna make it a little smaller now so that it doesn't slow everything down. So I'll make that a thousand. Just let that image size. And then I'll show you how we generally export things. Um, of course, you know, if you're exporting for web, often it's like oh, a whole. Oh yeah, that's true. We can't really see what we're doing in the timeline video. Maybe we can pull that timeline oh. video over to the side. Okay. So Thanks you can see. Thanks, Devin. So you can here, see we just have five frames, mm -hmm. and each one is just ever so slightly different yeah. than the next. So we just have the four f uh, flame layers, which you can see here on the right, and then they are kind of counting up and then counting back down so that it's like a nice, perfect Art. loop. Yeah. yeah. So now that I have this size down, I'm gonna export it for web. Ooh, we're about 
I don't know. Oh, we're pretty close to the. We're getting close to the chat and win. So <laughs> just make sure minutes, that you, you stay active in that chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so usually when exporting for GIF, we like to keep as many colors as possible. Obviously, if you have size constraints, if you're putting this up on the web and you need a really fast loading time, you might want to bring the colors down. But right now we have it set at 128. And I like using pattern, especially for photography, because I feel like it kind of gives the smoothest um, backgrounds often. Yeah. Like you, you can often get these like kind of weird it's halos banding. happening. Yeah, so avoiding which that. Which you see over here. But I would recommend experimenting with your own and seeing what mm -hmm. the different set sets, um, presets look. Yeah, it really you. depends on the color. It depends mm -hmm. on if it's flat or if it's um, like a full sort of photographic image. It also depends on where you want this to live. Mm -hmm. um, so you always want to try to keep your gifts as small as possible so that they play really smoothly. Yeah. But for this case, I'm feeling like okay, this one so feels was that nice first and smooth. Flame, um, frame duplicated for the last frame for the seamless loop. I think the first uh, first flame, that is a tongue twister. Yeah. Um, the first flame was not duplicated. It was duplicated to create the four additional yeah. liquefied flames, which were all kind of independently adjusted. But we're using that same first flame to um, come back to that infinite infinite loop on the first layer. Yeah, so we you never want the same. If you had the first um, frame in the GIF the same as the last uh, last in the timeline, it would be it would be a longer play, right? So you can't every single one of those has to be different so that you're not having any moment that sort of gets stuck. All right. So this is our Lossy final Yeah, the lossy gift. slider also. Yes, Tim, mm -hmm. that's great. It can be a good way to shrink down the size. Yeah, and you can see what happens when you select pattern. Like there is almost like this tiny little gridded. Uh, it's probably hard to see on here, but um, you can see the grid that happens with your image. It's still pretty crisp, but there is obviously going to be some loss in a photographic GIF, um, which I'm sure we've all seen in many video memes where it's just like you you. You just see the motion, but um, often, you know, the crispness of the image is lost. But I feel like this is pretty good for what yep. we need. Um, yes, yeah, so we got a good taste of animating that. And now we have a new version that we can share for October. Yeah, <laughs> so great. So now it's fully on fire. All right. All right. OK, so. ooh, two minutes to the stickers. <laughs> All right. Make sure your... you stay active in that chat. Yeah. All right, so I'm actually just going to bring this back to the original size so that I have. That's what I always forget to do is usually when I export, I size things down first just so that I don't have to wait for the um, the web save to do it for me because it tends to always take a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but then I have to remember to put it back. So I'm going to save this out. Wonderful. And then I think we can hop back say to. Say goodbye to our thumbnail image. Yeah. <laughs> If you enjoyed seeing that. And yeah, if you have any other questions about um, how we edited this, feel free to check back in with that day one live stream where we go through the whole process. Yeah. Um, all right, so we do have that chat and win coming down, but I think that we can start to get into um, yeah. the project that we'll be working on today, which is um, the Mercedes Benz project that we brought up a little bit later. So we'll be going through that whole process with you. Yep. Um, from the initial brief from the client, which we'll talk about, as well as um, how we present our sketches yeah. and our, um, our colored in sketches, as well as our concepts for how we will be um, executing the final. So how we show our materials, yes. um, our inspiration and references. Yeah, basically we're going to show you all of the client-specific mm -hmm. communications that we don't usually surface. Which I think is always yes, my it's favorite. Yes, stickers this time. We are going to have that sticker. Ooh, Less than a minute, Less you guys, than a so minute. keep it keep active. It, keep it active. I know, oh yeah, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we have to tell what people are going to win. 100 free 3x3 three three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, if you don't end up getting it this time, you can always go back into um, yeah. stickermeal.com slash Adobe Live 19, and there's going to be a special deal for you guys. Yeah. So if 30 more seconds, yeah. make sure you stay active. Yeah, um, and if you have any questions, just because you're meant to be chatting now, anyway, that we can answer after the countdown, please get them in the chat, too. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and pull back up our website so that we can go back into this Mercedes-Benz project when the moment comes. But right now we have seven, six. It's so close. Stay active in that chat, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and here we are. <laughs> See you along.
Okay. Let's find out who Let's won. Find out who the winner is. <laughs> Thanks everybody for participating. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody in the chat. Hi yes. Jose. Hello. Danielle. Let's Jordan. See. Ooh ooh ooh. <laughs> Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? <laughs> oh, any second now. <laughs> stickers, 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 stickers. <laughs> stickers. What are you guys stickers. gonna do with these stickers? I think they get to have their logo die cut. Oh, well, that's pretty maybe cool. Maybe they can choose what they'd like. We should do that and put I it know. on our computer. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good sticker. Mm hmm. All right. Chat's filling up. And I think we're seconds away. Yes. <gasps> Jose Frausto. Oh, Jose. Hello, Jose Frausto. Hi. Saw you in the chat. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. So I'll be in touch with you about how you can redeem that prize. Yes. And for everyone else, be sure you check out stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19. There's going to be a deal there in case you want yep. to snag up your own stickers. Um, and thanks, everyone, for participating in the chat. Yeah. Um, and don't forget to stay tuned because we still have that creative challenge coming up in a little bit and we're yeah. going to be going through all of your submissions. We're really excited to see your selfies and how you've used that patch tool. Absolutely. Um, we're also going to be talking a little bit about the patch tool yep. in some of these demos. I really love that tool, so it's super handy. It's good yes. that you guys are it's near learning near. how to use it. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so we so are back here. We are. here. I think um, we're on my screen. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So what we share on our website, right? Like we've shared the finals. We've shared how it lives on social. Um, we've shared a little bit of the behind the scenes. Part of what we delivered were actually quite a few behind the scene videos. We use a little GoPro here to share our process, which created a time. We set it to time lapse and mm -hmm. created a little stop motion. So okay. this was actually part of what the client asked from mm -hmm. us. Um, on top of sharing the images on their social, mm -hmm. which is what you see up here, um, they also show, they wanted us to have some behind the scenes um, for their stories. Yeah. So it does seem to be sort of a typical ask from clients now that they just want as much content as possible, which is something that you can always um, charge extra for because it does take a little bit more planning and time to set that up, especially <laughs> since it's just the two of us in the studio. Yep. Um, we have to be taking the photos and styling. So having a GoPro set up or having Having, you know, breaking up our time in order to get that behind the scenes can sometimes be challenging. Yeah. Um, but it is great that, you know, people want to see how we made things and it really does help to um, help people translate, you know, yeah. what they're seeing as the final, Absolutely. that it is a real thing and it was actually made. Yeah. So should we talk about the brief a little yes. bit? Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to go back here. So as I mentioned before, they asked, Mercedes-Benz um, was starting a partnership called Hashtag MB Photo Pass, mm -hmm. and they were asking different artists um, and creative people to create an interpretation of their cars throughout the decades. And so for us, since we often do these small scale sets, um, they wanted us to work with four different models of their cars that were in a tiny scale. They were really just this big. They were mm -hmm. these toy cars. Um, and I think they were also specifically interested in papercraft mm -hmm. for this one. They showed a lot of references yeah. of past projects that yep. were papercraft and just wanted something kind of interpretive and otherworldly for these little cars to live in and hopefully feel larger than life. Yeah. So we worked um, pretty closely with them in the very beginning to sort of flesh out some concepts and we're going to take a look at those decks, but also even select the exact cars from those decades. So mm -hmm. it was a very close um, partnership there. So actually, I'm going to show you the first part of our process, which I'm going into Bridge again. Maybe not as it was intended, but as I mentioned yes. yesterday, I love using Bridge just to look she at reference images. Bridge. I love being able to size <laughs> my thumbnails. Yes. Um, you can do it a million ways. I just like Bridge. I, yes. <laughs> and I've grown to love it as well. Um, so especially for collaborative really work. Great. Yes, definitely. We can label things. We can pull them up really easily and it helps keep us organized. So what we started off doing is Nicole and I kind of just went off independently yep. and started looking at references for all of the different decades and how we might want to interpret them. Yep. Um, so we were generally pulling from uh, Pinterest, from our phones, from yeah. photos that we've taken. And that's, we from, moved away from that era, mm -hmm. so we can skip through. Oh, yeah. This was the first S, which was 1920s, but ended up being shifted yeah. to the 50s. We so we have some for of that. a closer bracket of time. So you can see we're pulling from all sorts of things, from yep. um, apartment decorations, yep. from spaces, <laughs> and 
from yeah. posters and advertising. Yeah, um, and even starting to take in an initial look at color. Mm -hmm. We were not entirely sure at the very beginning how these would live in the social feed, whether it would be like a scroll through or if they were gonna be each individual images. So we were already conscious of palettes and how they might flow together. Mm -hmm. And also that color really does speak to different eras as well and different materials. Yeah. So we pull all sorts of things. So that was the 1950s, which yeah. you saw in the final, then going into the 60s, looking yeah. at how we could potentially interpret that. Um, we often you know, love to pull references from um, you know, all over the place, as I mentioned, um, color schemes from mm -hmm. um, other designers that we admire that might have like a way of interpreting color that we want to pull from mm -hmm. or combine with some of our other references. Um, in this case, you know, Mercedes already has some existing advertisements, so pulling from that seemed like a great place to start. Yeah. Um, referencing the brand itself, um, you know, old ads, even just ways we might be interpreting um, some of the shapes that we'd be creating. So really we've created a folder rather mm -hmm. than some designers will use Pinterest and make a private, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, what is it called? Mood board. Or, yeah. um, and just keep it for themselves. We definitely do look at Pinterest. I think when you're Google, you're searching for an image, that's often where you're gonna land. But we actually just pull these images and organize them like this. So mm -hmm. we can easily just pull up. Um, and then going yeah. into the 80s, so we had really fun time looking into color mm -hmm. schemes here, as well as other car ads again. Yeah, and we, with within this, um, I think I just have the sketches from round two actually ready to go, but we, because we landed on different eras, but we provide this information in some form to the clients and mm -hmm. we can show you how we do that in a deck. Yeah, so then I'll just, oh, for present day, we, we didn't even pull really any reference yeah. for present day because we were kind of just like, okay, what feels right for us? So yeah. it's a little bit of color. Um, what else do we have in here? Decades general, I'm not even sure. Pure <laughs> abstract, often we're just pulling from different ways of creating shapes and shadows. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we just have a mix of things that we usually go through yeah. together and we'll decide, you know, what makes sense for us. Yeah. And then from there, we will um, put that together in yeah. an initial deck to the client, which I can open here. We can, should we even go to the sketches or, or is this the very first one? Uh, I believe this is the very first one. We might want to skip to the second one. I don't know. Well, let's just see what we have okay. in here. Um, so, you know, we usually like to talk about what our goal is in yeah. the project and what we want to show to the client. And then we do organize all of our references here for them to see. I yep. can make that a little smaller so you so guys now can you, see it. Yeah, so you can see all of that reference work that we've done. It reappears here. We've mm -hmm. like discussed amongst ourselves what we feel really is capturing that time best and we pull it into a deck. And we actually did present a bunch of different concepts, which we will kind of quickly go through and show you how we sort of break up those different ideas. Yeah, and also how we use Photoshop to enhance our actual pencil mm -hmm. sketches. Um, so, you know, the first concept, you can see our like rough little sketches here. We like to include color in these. Um, we photoshopped in the car just so that the client could really understand how that would be living. And we explain a little bit about how these things will be made. So obviously yeah. these sketches are very rough and not what the final will look like, but our interpretation in paper and with light and um, depth and shadow are really what we want to try and convey yeah. to them. I think it's also good to keep in mind that this is the first thing that the client's seen. So we, we want to consider some things to like you know, give it some heft, but there's an understanding usually, um, even in our estimates and when we first start with a project, we already are building out the pacing and the schedule so they know mm -hmm. that we'll have several rounds. Um, so they understand this is a first that yeah. we're going to have a call and discuss, and then we will we'll dig in deeper. And then by the end, we become very refined mm -hmm. with what we're delivering. So we have a few different concepts mm -hmm. here. The first one is a bit more Oh, kind I do of have the sketches for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Nicole's gonna be showing the sketches in a little bit and showing just how we apply color to those. But just to give you kind of an overall sense, we have three different concepts here. This one's probably the most kind of surreal. We have these really large shapes. So you can see the car is almost living in this fantasy world. Whereas in the concept before, it's a little bit more um, kind of on this pedestal or in the space, but it yeah. is changing across all of the different sketches. Yep. Um, Again, going into our next concept, which was more motif, which is, and it ended up being what we decided to go with. So you can see 
how close the sketches are to some of those final images and how much we really tried to stay in the um, color restraints and sizing that we set out in the sketch. Um, the one thing that did change was they asked for a different decade on this initial um, image here. So it went from the 20s to the 50s. So we did have to adjust that in the second round, mm -hmm. but all the rest of these are pretty similar. And yeah. we also do like to show, you know, how the image is going to scale down for different um, needs in social. So they wanted something that worked for stories as well as on Instagram, but always kept the car front and center. Yes. So with all of these, we show how we break up the image and where those lines are going to hit um, for stories and for Instagram within one single image. And we really stuck to that in the finals. Yeah. And I think this is also, you know, a really good example of because there is quite a leap from a sketch to a photograph image that we are providing absolutely as much as we can, mm -hmm. really, you know, in terms of like what that final will look like. And you'll see how that progresses. And that really does come in in the second round where we go yeah. kind of deep into the, um, the sets and how we're going to be building yeah. this out. We had one more concept here. Yeah. So this one's a little bit more surreal and you can see it's like kind of the most fant fantasy, surreal, crazy yeah. in terms of where we're setting these cars, but it does have this consistent central axis. So all of them are kind of offering different ideas for how we could position those cars, yeah. how they're going to travel in space, and how we're representing those um, decades within this timeline. So our concepts are not wildly different. They have just like sort of a different approach. So we are always trying to keep things so it's not just too much to look at, too too busy, but we organize that information very clearly and mm -hmm. yeah, let people know like we can approach this turning this way, turning that way, <laughs> but they're not like full leaps. Yeah. All right, before we move to this, oh, we've got yeah. this. And then great. in the end, we just like to show everything together mm -hmm. so that they can really, this is kind of the easiest slide um, and really simple to make to show um, clients when you're getting feedback at the end. So they've just seen all the concepts, you've talked through everything, and instead of having to flip back to, you know, slide three to talk about the first concept or, you know, whichever slide, you have everything all in one place and you can really discuss those different attributes of oh, each concept. I don't know what font we use on our decks. Oh, it is called Infini. Um, it is, I believe it's available on um, Adobe Fonts and it's also um, mm -hmm. our web font for our body mm -hmm. copy. So if you go to our website, you'll see that there. It's not the main um, header font, but it's within the body copy. Yeah, yeah so this really provides a great snapshot, right? So yeah, a lot of classic cars, yeah. Melinda, it's true. Um, <laughs> So we can really show fun. a little bit about how we mm -hmm. make these yeah. sketches, how we apply color to them, um, which yeah. Nicole has over on her side. Um, so. We actually tend to apply color in very different ways. Like we usually sit side by side and we sketch together um, and we talk about our ideas and look at the references. And then often we'll kind of go off independently, well, independently still sitting next to each <laughs> other usually, but we'll be you know drawing our different ideas. We like to print out um, you know, the sizing so that we have everything correct. We've tried using an iPad to sketch digitally, but for some reason it just kind of doesn't stick. I think because we're often passing sketches back and forth, which I know you can do digitally, but yeah. since we're just sitting next to each other, it usually makes more sense to do it um, in person and we can, you know, tear things off or move things around. So we'll often like cut out our favorite sketches yeah. and pin those up or take a look at them together. So it kind of just gives us a little bit more flexibility. Yeah. It's really, the, again, it's subjective however you feel most comfortable, but like we are not precious as you can see with <laughs> the way that we sketch. It is so quick. So, but the first thing, um, I'm going to take this off is what I realized was drawing those cars in there really wasn't helpful. So we were going to collage this in later. So that's one of the first thing we did was you can just easily in Photoshop, just take, take this out. So those aren't completely out, but they're enough out so mm -hmm. that the overlays can fit over. Yeah. I definitely like to pull in, um, a lot of people use libraries. I've used that as well to create a palette. Um, but I was pulling in references for each decade. So this has a really nice, um, even for the 50s feel with a lot of chromes and golds. And this is like a really nice pop color palette. This seemed like a fun example of an 80s palette. And this really, we were kind of open, I think, mm -hmm. with the present day. This is a little dated, 2018. <laughs> but it seemed to have some colors that we might want to pull in. So using those, um, if we go into here, and I've got this all organized as you do so that you can change stuff and alter things. Um, but just plopping that in, in bottom four, just painting over top with different opacity layers mm -hmm. to add some different colors. Um, and then going ahead and 
adding those cars in. So those are just cut out, you know, pulled the cars that we thought we might use from websites and adding them in. And then doing the same thing to the middle. Um, with this, I think I added a little bit more atmosphere. I feel like my screen's a little dark. And then adding those cars in there. And for good or for bad, I'm not sure. Honestly, sometimes it's not entirely helpful. I add a little shine and lightness sometimes <laughs> to these. That is a tricky thing. I like to imply that we're gonna have, and we think we like to show that we're gonna have a lot of dimension in the sets. And that's a little bit of a challenging thing to do with a flat color um, overlay, but it could go either way. So that was included in the deck that you just saw, and that's how we mm -hmm. built those out. So again, we're sitting across from each other. We're talking through concepts. We are splitting up. We know we want to have, I think we wind up with four. We sort of decide who's going to tackle what, and we start building those out. And we're looking at each other to make sure that there's enough variation and difference and mm -hmm. that those concepts feel more cohesive and put together. Yeah. And then, yeah, just talking about a little bit those like extra touches in the color. Yeah. Um, often it does kind of help imply the depth and, and shadowing that you're going to get in the final image. Um, but we do want to be careful sometimes of um, putting in something that we can't actually create. Mm -hmm. So it's a fine line between mm -hmm. showing that depth and dimension, but yeah. also not implying that there will be extra light or materials that perhaps we wouldn't actually be able to do. Yeah. Um, but it kind of does create in a strange way like a nice amount of ambiguity between the sketch and the final so that people aren't locked into exactly what it is that they're going to be getting like yeah. you can never get exactly the sketch and we yeah. like to be pretty clear yeah. with that with our clients i mean there are some times that you can get pretty close let's yeah. say you're doing paper craft and you want to be drawing everything in illustrator you can pretty directly translate those things into paper craft but still there's going to be lighting there's going to be dimension there's mm -hmm. going to be depth so there's some leap yeah, there's always going to be a different mood between the um, the illustrated version mm -hmm. and the final version. Okay, um, so we can move on to round two. Yeah, so I have here the um, deck for the second round where we have already chosen our final sketches from the client. Um, so they have chosen, um, you know, going back to the first deck on um, my computer here, um, the client has gone with concept two which mm -hmm. actually is not, there we yeah, go. Yeah, there we are. They have decided to go with this one. I think the key aspects that they brought out um, in the round of feedback were that they liked that the car was in a really consistent kind of heightened pedestal position um, in this concept. And we were sort of cognizant also of certain lines and areas of the photo blending into one another. So pieces of this image kind of go into this one. And then there's like this nice arc here that is mirrored in the second image. So there is some consistency across the different decades, even though the artwork itself is very different. Yeah. So then going into our second round, which is where we start to show our clients um, how exactly we're going to be making this and what materials we'll be working with. Um, again, we talk about, you know, what our goal is, um, what the chosen concept was, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, what that entails. Um, and then we go into sort of a, I guess like a mood board of what our materials and colors are, um, the inspiration that we're drawing from, if there are any aspects that um, are taken from real life. So for example, this is a new sketch that we ended up doing for the 50s since they changed the decade on us last minute. Um, so this was the sketch that we presented, which is referencing this little mirror here, which is um, yeah, just some of the decade. chrome and sunray, you know, things that were popular during that time. And again, okay, so this has a lot of information, mm -hmm. um, but that also speaks to how many eyes were on this project. So there are a lot of point people and a lot of people signing off on it. So really, this was helpful to sort of like share clearly and organized set expectations mm -hmm. and get everybody on the same page with the direction that we were aligning on. And as much as possible, we like to show, if we have an existing example of something that we have done in yeah. previous work, we will show that here in the set elements. Yeah. In this case, we're kind of pulling from things that are similar to what we might be making, as well as different materials that would go with the car, um, as well, and also the color palette that we're yeah. planning on working with. So we go ahead and do that through all of the different decades, again, showing that final sketch. Um, I believe they also changed the, um, yeah, they changed the scales. So yeah. instead of asking for stories and four by five, they asked for a square and four by five. So we adjusted the sketches to match that, um, kept those references in here, which I believe are the same 
coming from um, the first round. Mm -hmm. And Set again, all palette. of these pieces, mm -hmm. which this is um, a little peek from our project with Otherland, which we showed yesterday and is on our website. So we are pulling from work that we have done ourselves, um, which is always helpful and I think helps to build a little bit of trust with the client when they see work that they can recognize from your portfolio. Yeah. And then going into the 80s, and this is the image that we'll be diving into um, how we photoshopped and put this together in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so this one was really fun because it has a lot of um, lighting that really was what brought this to life. So a lot of yeah. it had to do with the photography initially and we wanted to convey that in our design reference. So showing as much as possible the way light can affect these shapes. Yeah. Um, as well as an existing car ad that we're pulling from, which I think they love to see. Um, so really, you know, deep blues and purples, mm -hmm. um, getting that vintage 80s kind of surreal goodness, yep. um, showing how we'd make the columns. I brought these to show you guys and I left them outside. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we made these little columns which are about this big and you can see the behind the scenes um, on our website and our Instagram if you go to Party of One Studio. Yeah. Um, so you can see how we actually made those yeah. pieces. And then the final, which was present day. So again, pulling from um, some of the references that we showed you before. Uh, color palette, really nice kind of clean shapes here. Again, also showing some of our existing work and um, that updated sketch with the um, car in place at the angle that we want to show it in so that they know exactly what their product is going to look yep. like. Do we have a favorite project? Oh, oh. that's a question. Ah, I think we often <laughs> like the last thing we've finished. Um, yeah, we always tend to like yeah. <laughs> the final thing we've worked on. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I have so many that I've really enjoyed for different reasons. I think like what makes a good project is like a really nice relationship and rapport with whomever you're working with, whoever your client is. That's always really, really super fun. Um, and then also having, you know, a little bit of freedom and people really understanding the kind of work that we do. Mm -hmm. I think that just always leads to the best results. And I love a materials challenge. It's mm -hmm. like if I was on, I don't know, whatever project runway, I would be there for the alternative materials challenge. I'm like, <laughs> how can we transform this? So those are the things. Mm hmm. Yes, definitely. We were definitely, um, Montreal, I think, like, came back in the 60s, that sort of thing in clothing. So, yeah, we definitely were feeling that for as a reference. Good eye, Tima. Um, all right. So uh, now I'm going to take you into what our process looks like yes. for the photography um, and then get into a bit of the editing. So I have, again, Bridge up here, my favorite program. Um, <laughs> And I'm just going to show you, you know, all of our behind the scenes photos for how we sort of set up this image. Again, as you saw yesterday, we often like to take a lot of different tests, um, yeah. try out lighting techniques. Yeah, just recapping. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're, we're focused on client work and how we work with clients to set expectations from the beginning and work the project through to the end. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, yeah, we really did share that we had so many shots. And in that case, we were the models. It was a little tricky, bouncing back and forth. But for this, we're really trying to get the right lens, the right mm -hmm. camera angle, and make sure that the pieces that we um, built sufficiently fill the frame. Yeah. So a big challenge with this one. So you can kind of see and the you can scale really of our set. set in camera, right? Yeah. 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 We a lot of things often have to change once we have put a camera on it. This is not the you know, final lighting, but it was a good sense of how small this set is and how much smaller the car is to the rest of the set yeah. of the scale. And looking back to our sketches, that's not really how we had it lay out. So we, mm -hmm. we had a really like, these tests were so valuable so that we could take some time to really consider how we might stagger the set, which you'll see. Right, so we had to figure out a way to make the, um, we were shooting with a macro lens here so that we could get the car to be really crisp, but we didn't really want that depth of field that you usually get with a macro lens. So the challenge here was um, no, actually shooting- we didn't shooting, want a blurry background. Yeah, actually right. shooting two plates so that we got really crisp um, car in the front, which was actually set forward probably about four feet from the um, final image. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you can sort of tell, this is just a test shot. But, but you can see that car is really front and center, really mm -hmm. crisp and clear. And again, we are back into a composite scenario. A composite world, yeah. So we're shooting two different plates and really here we're just testing, okay, we've made this set. It looks good, you know, to the naked eye, but putting it in front of the camera and taking the photo with this lens, okay, maybe this needs to move forward, mm -hmm. maybe this needs to get bigger, how can we make it seem like this car is actually, um, you know, 
step forward much more and bigger in the space just as a sketch that we provided. Um, mm. So we can, I can even show you some of our, this is like really some behind the scenes and it's not super pretty, but I'm gonna show it anyway. Um, we created these little maquettes. <laughs> this surprised of, um, me. No, <laughs> this is great actually. Okay, see, wonderful. I, have these. I actually, I might Oops. have them. Oh, here we go. Okay, great. So before I show these, uh, often in these set projects, before we make any of the final things, we just need to kind of make, it's almost like if you're working in fashion, making like the muslin version of the yeah. dress. Um, so we'll make it out of just cardboard and tape and um, newsprint, whatever we really have lying around so that we can get a sense of the scale. Mm -hmm. And they are usually pretty wonky and pretty weird, but they really help us out in terms of getting the thing. Yeah. And we'll shoot it on a phone. Yeah, and we're not gonna, you know, waste our materials, our yeah. final materials on these. So. so we tend to do this every time. This is just an iPhone yeah. photo of the car on like a can of coffee covered in paper to get I the say scale. this is not something we share with the We client. do not share this, we do no. not, <laughs> because we don't want to lose their car. <laughs> this is entirely for us and for yeah. you guys to see how we plan yeah. the set, um, the scale of our set. Yeah. Um, but it is not the pretty work yeah. that we share um, up front. Like this, but it this is, is crazy. Helpful okay. <laughs> for us, it truly is. Mm -hmm. So. So here, you know, this is just a crazy thing made out of Actually, like paper. But I loved how you did this, though. <laughs> There was so much more dimension because we are shooting right on our phone and our camera exactly how it is. But like it almost looked like a carnival game. There yeah. was so much going on just to keep the stairs up. And, and often really you clever. have to sort of adjust the perspectives of things a lot. Like with this one, we sort of want to see the top of the stairs. So in doing this test, yeah. we had all the stairs perfectly at a 90 degree angle. Um, in real life, but then shooting forward, you couldn't see the top of the yeah. stairs. So we had to stretch out this accordion and really understand what the size of each step should be that yeah. looked good in relation to the car. So we this is just shows you again how many different mm -hmm. ways we are tweaking and refining our designs before we're finally <laughs> building it. This is the first one. This is yeah. crazy time. So you can see, like, I mean, for us, it was fine though. We could, all we really wanted to learn was what can we size see the stairs? The should be. Right. And also we had to learn that And also um, the pitching. angles and pitching of those sides so that we could mm -hmm. see the yellow. So those were cut so differently. They look correct in the image, but the real life pieces are just completely yeah. built so that we can see all the surfaces we want to see. So in this initial one, we had a flat bottom and these kind of um, pyramid sort of shapes that are coming out, um, you just don't see the top of it at all. So they almost just look like flat shapes. So we pitch the front angle down. So in real life, these are not stable <laughs> in terms of um, you know how they're built, but they look like you're kind of getting this overhead view of the set, which yeah. is what we wanted to achieve. So yeah, so and we then, went through all of that. This was for, that's not the correct car in there. We knew we wanted to do something uh -huh. really epic and and <laughs> yeah, so this was the 80s one, which we'll be showing you the final photo yeah. in a little bit. So first we started off just doing this out of cardboard just to get the scale. And you can see this Again. is just foam core, a couple pieces of paper, a magazine I had yeah. lying around to get the scale of it. Yeah. And we did this first and said, okay, that feels pretty good. And then moved into making the um, actual columns, which yeah. were made out of, um, I think this is like a paper towel roll that's covered in, um, when I mentioned before, this sort of rubber material that has yeah. these little corrugated pieces on it that feel like a marble column, yeah. and then finished off with a few little details on the top and this Just like archway. Like, yeah. So this was how we plan out, I think most of our projects we end up doing um, a little cardboard maquette before yeah. we build anything out of our final materials. Also it might be interesting to know, like so many things that we do create are really just made for the photo. So mm -hmm. we're still like, the final materials might be like have some tape that we know can be hidden or just like we showed yesterday with the sleeves that end here and are just taped onto the mm -hmm. arm that yeah. we are we're building for a photo we know where we can be efficient yeah oh i see a question what's the average number of projects you work on per oh year oh goodness i think if you look at the website i'd say 75 percent of them <laughs> we did last year yeah honestly we uh, I I, a project I like this a took maybe um, from the very beginning of getting the project to going through the concepting rounds, which was probably about two weeks um, yeah. with the client going through two or three rounds and yeah. changes and getting approval from them, which was actually a pretty lengthy approval process because we worked through an agency. So mm -hmm. the clients hired the agency and the agency hired us. So everything had to be approved twice over. Yes. Um, so that whole process honestly sometimes takes the longest amount of time mm -hmm. like getting people to just sign off on what the final idea is mm -hmm. so that was maybe two weeks yeah but at the same time I, we probably had an editorial project going at the same time yeah we usually so, will have two or three or sometimes five yeah. or six projects going at once um which 
you know, it, it's kind of fun because often we can sort of break things up between yeah. the two of us and we won't get stuck on the same sort of tedium one day or the other. We can bounce around. And we always come together when we're um, actually on a shoot day. Like the final finessing of props and set build, we'll come together for that and be, we have a real tag team way of working. I often do more of the tweaking styling on the mm -hmm. set and Melissa's often really like finessing the lighting and behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So we're always together for those days and we're always together anyways really in the studio mm -hmm. but we might be working on separate things. So you can see here, I think this is kind of a good example of how we went through all of the testing for the light. There's tons of photos mm -hmm. here that almost look like some of them could be the same, but we're just going through and just kind of loosely trying to see, you know, what do we like? What kind of mood do we want to set here? How is the light affecting the podium? How is mm -hmm. it affecting the background? Um, what type of kind oh, of yeah. ambiance do we want? And then just being really ridiculous. Some of these things, I think we had this question yesterday, can you like comp things in and in, in Photoshop later? So like even just like tweaking where that little moon's going to be, mm -hmm. like that is something that you probably could cut and paste and move a little bit and we probably yeah. did in the very final. But we, but we always try possible. to get, yeah, we try to get stuff as close to the final as we can. And all of these kind of had a different way of making. Oh. Um, this one was sort of, crazy because we had all these fires that had to come in that were all individually placed and cut. And That's you can see, you know, Nicole getting in there, tweaking tiny little pieces. Yep. Um, we shot the background here as its own plate. Yeah. And then this one's pretty fun, which is what we'll be yeah. going into I in a think, little bit. I'm, yeah. honest, I'm just gonna like flip through these images. So we're setting up the lighting, we're setting up the car in front. Again, there's like maybe a four foot gap between yes. where the car is and where that background is. Yes. We're testing out lighting, we're testing out where we want this little moon to be, what the background color should be. And even though these are mini cars, we want to get as much detail and mm -hmm. nice lustrous uh, lighting and, yeah. and shadows that we can. And, and here this we're was testing exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. So it's a fully white set, except for the blue background and the blue little um, orb and the blue car, but we knew we wanted to get some neon color in there, so we were experimenting with gels. Yeah, so with this, um, we basically had one light coming up between the car and the background with yeah. this magenta filter, um, which was shooting up and we were testing, you know, how, how dramatic does it need to be. We had a light kind of coming in from the background that was lighting the back of the orb and giving a little glow there. Um, you know, testing it out light, testing it out dark, trying to figure out what we liked. Mm -hmm. And with this, we were wondering kind of in the process, you know, obviously this car is super dark. How do we want to bring that out? Should it be its own comped layer? Is that going to look false? Um, or do we want to light it on its own? So what we ended up deciding was lighting the car independently. So I think these are some of our tests kind of leading up to that. I'm just going to show you guys everything. Yeah, so here we start using a spotlight to come in on the car, which as I said, there's a big distance. So the spotlight is coming in. If this is the car, the spotlight's coming in here. And then we have the set back here with a magenta light coming up that's lighting it independently. Ooh. And the, the whole set in the back. Yeah, and just noticing we're about, oh, I don't know, like 25 minutes away from that design feedback. So, oh, yeah. so keep looking forward to see for the daily your, challenge. Yeah. Excited to see your selfies. Yes. All right, so that means we should probably get into the yeah, photo. But yeah, you can see it. that light up there that is what's lighting yep. the car independently. So in the but end. Again, so fun to see, right? <laughs> I mean, I think it's fun to see. We were like, wow, we this worked out. Is fun. <laughs> yeah, it really worked out. Again, we had this luminous glow in our sketches, um, and then we are faced with the challenge of really creating it. And there's other ways that you could do it. You can do it with color overlays in Photoshop. You can alter your images that way. But we, again, we like to get stuff as much in camera as we can. So it was a lot of experimentation mm -hmm. on the day just to get that really hot pink. But we were really happy that it ended up working primarily oh. in camera. The style goes well with Nick Gala. Oh, Thank that is a high compliment. You. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank now you. I'm gonna show you how we um, actually edited this photo and how we did all of that compositing within the image. So with this one, I know yesterday we talked a little bit about how we usually edit in raw and yeah. that's a big part of kind yeah. of the pre-tweaks that we get into. Yes. I think with this image, we actually didn't do we very really much. We really didn't, no. Um, so I'm not sure how much we need to show. I think we just did um, some of the lens mm -hmm. correction with this. Yeah. But for the most part, we had all that information in the photograph itself. So we, in this case, did not do any pre-raw work. 
but I'll show you, you know, all the steps that we went through. So here we have two different plates that we're comping in, um, again, for the background and for the main car layer. As I mentioned, we were shooting with a macro lens, which is great for small scale sets, but it does create a lot of depth of field, even with a really, um, a really large aperture, it still is really hard to kind of get a really um, wide shot of a set to look crisp on both sides. So we shot two different um, layers, one with the car and one with the background. Yeah. So you can see here the base layer of the background, which is nice and crisp. And then we have the front layer with the car, which we have just kind of silhouetted in here and added to the top. And it's still, you know, you can definitely still see um, the areas that we'll need to be editing, but we have a nice kind of clean car here with the lighting that we wanted to put in. Yep. So the main thing here, which is great for your challenge because I believe we used a lot of patch tooling in yeah, here. Yeah, so, you know, we definitely, like we've said, uh, we try to get things as smooth, but when you're working at a miniature scale, you'd be surprised. Things like any little flaw is just gonna blow up. It's mm -hmm. gonna look so much bigger. And also in this case, these aren't really minor flaws. Like you can see there's a very wavy edge on mm -hmm. the top of the pedestal. But we also are pretty confident in knowing what we can fix, what needs to be there, like real shadows need to be there. A ragged edge can be adjusted. Mm -hmm. And even with the podium, you know, we try to get the light mm -hmm. as even as possible. Mm -hmm. But I think what I ended up doing here was yep. duplicating this side of the podium and just mirroring that over here so that we got a really kind of even light with the exception of this one little shadow that's cast by the car. Yeah. So the rest of this was really just kind of painted in with a clone stamp. Yeah. Um, luckily we have a really nice kind of white area we're pulling from. So this is an example from. where we're not using um, liquify. We, we want to keep that pattern and not mm -hmm. have it like warp or distort because there was some pattern in the paper that we used. So I'm even just gonna go in here and do a little bit more cleanup. There's like some slight banding that's happening on the white. So just using the patch tool, I'm just kind of selecting some of that banding and pulling it into a nice clean area of white, which I'm sure is what you guys are doing for your daily yeah. creative challenge. We're looking forward um, to seeing this. One thing I also really love about the patch tool, I'm gonna just test it over here, even though that's not what we want. So let's say we wanted to kind of, um, I don't know, move this pattern over, or here, maybe just get rid of this yeah. kind of little flaw that's happening here. Um, you can pull this into an area of the pattern that is nice and clean, and then just make sure that you're kind of lining that up um, to sort of correspond with where you're pulling from, and then drop it in, and now you've gotten rid of that flaw. And one thing that's really helpful is also fading the patch tool, yes. which I'm sure Voodoo Val has gotten into as well, but I love this feature. Yes. You just hit Shift-Command-F, and it allows you to fade what you have just done. So you have to do it right after you've um, selected the patch tool, but it's really good for, um, especially with like skin tones or things yeah. where you don't want it to be a really direct copy of the thing that you're pulling from. Um, you just want like a little subtle softening of that area. Yes. You can pull that fade in and um, you know make it more or less. So I'm actually just gonna um, have it full because yeah. we just wanna get rid of that imperfection. And, and yeah, yeah, nice and clean. So with this, I mean, you can see that we already did kind of pull a lot of the little specks of dust yep. and um, pieces of tape. You can mm -hmm. see over here, there's a little piece of tape. So we're just clone stamping this area of the, um, the column and bringing that down. Um, I can even just get rid of a few more little specks here. So using the spot healing tool, and just kind of clicking out those little specks of dust. Yep, this is all, and we love to do that. We love to get as clean as possible, but again, it's subjective. Mm -hmm. So you want to definitely, um, you know, leave what you feel comfortable just to let people know that this is a real thing. Yeah, and this um, is, you know, a metallic nice. car, so obviously oh, you want Tim it to has have. some good advice in the chat. Um, yes, the new content aware tool where you can oh, specify yeah. this sampling area. I haven't used that tool as much, but I've I do actually it, want to get into it. Yeah, I've used that a little bit, and I, I do find that helpful. So here you can actually just, um, you know, kind of start to see the scale of the car because it is so tiny. There's these strange little imperfections in the window, and these windows yeah. are like this big. Yeah, so just so small. Just making mm -hmm. sure that things are nice and clean and that, you know, we're not seeing any reflections of our lights in this um, glass surface. Yeah, or... you have to be so careful with reflective surfaces. Sometimes you're just going to see the camera or Oh no, us. You know, like it could be anything. So we, we really zoom into our photos and when we're, um, we're cleaning them up. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I think we got most of those things in here. I'm just looking to see. So we've also kind of straightened up yeah. some of the lines here. We put our guides in so that we can make sure that everything is nice and straight. Yep. Um, so we've clone stamped out that little piece of tape that was showing yep. with the blue. Kind of cleaned up the wall a little bit. Again, with the clone stamp, you can see our cut marks here from the foam core, as well as a little bit of hot glue from where we were making that podium. So everything is nice clean and cleaned up, up here. Um, most of this was probably just done with um, the clone stamp tool. Again, there are a million ways, but yeah. usually somewhere between like clone stamp and patch, I think is where yeah, I for sure um, I use like the healing work. healing tools Tim, as well. Yeah, but I think um, yes, I think a good thing to note here is that we're doing all these changes before we go back and do like final color passes. We mm -hmm. want to get the image as close to final as possible. We like to keep our files organized so that we can like see as we're showing you as you walk through you can see how the image was really built and everything's labeled. Um, this is really good you know for general practices but especially for client work if you have to make changes later and we're passing the files between the both of us mm -hmm. so that everything is organized and that you can really see how you got from A to B and um, everything is isolated and organized. So I am gonna pull the liquify tool here again because this is a good place to show um, how we often like to use that for sets where we have to have a really perfect curve or really straight line. So did you flatten everything before? Did you oh, make, yes. Yeah. Um, so after I made the, um, the layer with the car on top, I just um, duplicated and combined those two layers to make one nice, smooth, even layer for editing, mm -hmm. which is really helpful, especially when you are using patch, because if you're pulling from something that is um, not the full image, or let's say you kind of clone stamped a little area and it's not um, covering the entire surface of the image, when you're pulling the patch tool, it can kind of mess up um, where you're selecting that um, the area of the patch from, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, but I always just like to edit on a nice, clean layer once you've already done all of your kind of initial comping. So then going into this, we have already pretty much straightened up a lot of things, but there are a few little areas that we can show how we like to use the liquify tool to make our cut lines and our it's curves just like a really little nice. little bump there. Yeah, so like we'll just have the nudge tool here. So I'm just using that to kind of like make that that curve really nice and try to, you know, get that spacing to be a little bit more even. It's all really kind of subtle tweaks, but it does make a difference, especially when you're looking at it, you know, as a whole and uh, you want things to look really symmetrical and I, nice. Yeah, I agree. I think our images are a collection of tiny little things that add up mm -hmm. to, so actually, you know, really um, refined final. I'm using the bloat tool here to um, kind of increase the spacing of, it's really, really subtle, but you can see how it's um, literally bloating this little area so that the space between the shadow and the edge um, can be a little bit bigger since we cut that area maybe a little bit too small. Mm -hmm. So I'll make that brush bigger and just show how that works on a tighter, smaller area. So you can see how that bloat tool is really helpful. Yeah, for sure. And then I'm gonna use the squeeze tool here to make this area smaller a little bigger so you know this is all just like the minutia of editing which I think we both sort of really like to get into the details of it it's very calming it is <laughs> it is <laughs> do we have any questions in chat I'm curious yeah and have you have all been using the liquify tool um, have any questions about like client communications and process any of those please feel free mm -hmm. and we have about 16 more minutes yep. until we are reviewing um, the entries for the daily creative challenge. So we'll see how you guys have used the patch tool there. Um, so I'm just doing a few more little edits, some teeny tiny little kind of minutia here, mm -hmm. scooching this line over, getting it to be really nice and crisp. So I'll go ahead and apply that. And I can go in the history so you can see the difference. Mm. It is so tiny and mild, but when there's something even um, sort of more off about the image or a line that's not perfect, you can really see the difference here. Yeah. Um, but it just really allows for like super subtle changes. Yeah. So once we kind of have all of our edges cleaned up, we do like to do one final pass to make sure that everything is really symmetrical. So you'll notice here that this podium is like a little bit off. Yeah. Um, it's not lining up exactly to this side. So we have these edits here 
where we have scooched this podium up. So basically just kind of duplicated mm -hmm. this area, moved it up, and then kind of cleaned up some of the edges that are being shown. So let's see what we actually went in here. here. So we, yeah, we duplicated that area, scooched it up to make sure mm -hmm. that it aligns with our guides, um, cleaned up any craziness in our mask. Mm -hmm and then um, really just cleaned up some of our edging. So we have, this is um, a large piece of foam core that's covered in like a matte white tape to give it that kind of marble um, smooth effect. So we're just cleaning up those areas there, cleaning up those tape lines, making sure everything is nice and straight. You can see we rotated it a tiny bit as well. So now everything's like really nicely aligned and symmetrical. Mm -hmm. But we still have that little yeah. hint of it being handmade because it's not absolutely perfect. And, you know, I think that's yeah, what's that's sort of okay. special about it. Yeah. So then one sort of final touch. I mean, you could go on forever, right? Don't you yeah. agree? Yeah, you could make this look super, super shiny, There's slick, so and more CGI, time. honestly. But yeah. then people might think they can make any change to it because it is CGI. So we do want to, well, yeah. you know, let people know that this is handmade and oh, someone's just joining in and they're curious to find what the subject is. So um, we are a party of one studio and we do a lot of photographic um, set build design. Um, and with that yesterday, we talked about using personal projects to for self promotion and how we craft our images, usually with props and set and compositing later in Photoshop. And today we're breaking down how we communicate with clients um, and how our project runs from beginning to mm -hmm. end. So we started with our sketches and our decks and how we communicate our ideas clearly and carefully with clients. And then we've moved into how we actually craft those images that reflect back at the sketches that we've prevent, uh, presented. So this is a project that we did for Mercedes-Benz for their social feed, and we're showing how we are editing um, this particular image, which is of the 80s, um, in a series of four images of the different decades. So we were provided with this very 80s Mercedes-Benz toy car, and we created the set around it, and are now just cleaning up that image. So going into this kind of little surreal floating moon, um, I feel like this is one of the things that makes it feel super 80s, this kind of like glossy thing with the, the light hitting it in all it's these different ways. Orb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what we did here first was just create a, a mask of this globe, a nice perfect circle, which actually kind of helps round out, you know, any weirdness from um, the shape of this object. With I believe was just a ping pong ball that was yes. painted and covered in an iridescent powder, so it would give us a nice reflection and hung up with a wire. Yes. So, so the scale of all of these things are quite small. Yeah. Yes. So um, what we've done here is we've just selected um, the globe itself and applied a pretty intense Gaussian blur, which can be found in the filter um, and in blur. Yeah, Gaussian blur. Um, so we've applied that. So you can see how it's like really softened out this area. And since we have this really sharp mask, um, the blur is only being applied to that globe itself. So it makes it feel really kind of soft and spacey and mm -hmm. um, maybe like you can't really even tell what the material is, which is kind of cool. And then we've also applied this color shift, which is probably just in the blues. Let's check it out. Yeah, so we've kind of adjusted the cyan levels. Mm -hmm. um, we've made it so that that pops a little bit and is a slightly different blue temperature from the background. Mm -hmm. um, brought in a little bit of warmth with the yellow and then increased the contrast with the black there. So all of those edits are all just being applied within that um, selected circular mass that's going into the globe itself. Mm -hmm. And then finally, something we talked about yesterday, um, which is I think a, a color tweak that Nicole often likes to add, which like kind of gives things a little magical glow if you go into some of the presets in the photo filters. But with this one, um, we have like a nice cyan mm -hmm. filter that's being added that's just mm -hmm. adding sort of a color glow to this. But so there it just are, gives a little halo. There are a lot of other mm -hmm. um, presets that you can kind of get into. I know yesterday we talked a little bit about um, photo filters again, where you can just have these preset filters that sometimes are helpful to use if you just want a different kind of light temperature overall. Um, you yeah. can do this with a specific color overlay. But yeah. it's kind of just nice to experiment with some of these and sure. see, you know, what the possibilities and are. You can localize that change, or you can, um, yeah, or you can do a pass over the whole entire image. And then there's also color lookup, which is another one that yeah. we often get into. 
um, which I feel like is kind of like Instagram filters it for is. Photoshop. It is. I mean, I think so. Um, but yeah, sometimes that can be really fun to just change things around. And this one's pretty intense. Like, yeah. I'll just show you how it's really affecting the mood of the whole image. Yeah, and um, you've lost a lot, right? So, so this is something that maybe if we're using it, we're using it. It's oh, kind of cool. That's quite <laughs> lovely. We're using it at a very low percentage, or mm -hmm. changing the opacity, how we're applying it to the full image. I want to leave that crisp winter because mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. Gives us this actually like 80s bluish glow. So yeah. now we're just going off the rails here. Okay, but, so um, <laughs> Jose has a question. Mm -hmm. What type of collaborative work have you worked on and was it difficult meshing both parties' aesthetics? Oh, mm -hmm. well we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but I think um, initially how we started off doing collaborative work, um, we would sort of force ourselves to finish a project in a day. Um, whether or not we loved it or not, we would just share it and kind of like be okay with it and not be too precious. And I think that sort of helped yeah. us, um, yeah, not dwell on things for too long or not um, get obsessive about it being perfect and it is, is it exactly what I want or is it exactly what Nicole wants? It was just like the act of making things together and sort of enjoying that process. Yes, so um, as far as, um, Meshing our aesthetics. So we work closely together when we're concepting. So and we we've worked together for many years now. So we sort of know um, we can anticipate the direction that the other person might want to go in when they're even just describing an idea, how it might look. And I think we have like a really good push and pull with that. Where if someone feels really strongly, um, more strongly than the other person, we'll mm -hmm. tend to go with that direction. I mean, there's more projects. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and but we it's pretty easy for us to align. Yeah. I think in that zone. Oh, we do just have 10 minutes. So I hope y'all are working on your um, challenges. We can't yeah. wait to have a look. So with this now, the final piece that we've added, I'll take away this layer since it wasn't in our initial final image, even though yeah. I do really like this crisp yeah. winter look. It's a fun, it's a fun <laughs> one. We just have another little curves mask. Now at the very end, after we've done all of Actually, our editing. Even just, sorry, just to yeah. go back to that. Sometimes I think that is the best use of those color lookups is it can, when you are treating every part of your image as a separate thing and really digging into it, this, that color lookup, um, those LUTs that you can apply given overall. Mm -hmm. So it can sometimes bring together something that's feeling a little out of balance. Or maybe even just enhance um, the some of the, yeah. if we're working with colored lighting and yeah. we want a specific look, but we don't exactly have that gel, it's kind of a good way to tweak that yeah. um, without having to go into like the overall hue or saturation of the image. It kind of just provides like a nice wash. Yeah. Um, so sure. here, yeah, okay. we just have our final curves layer. Um, and that is pretty it, much it. That was our it. final image. And yeah. I think like we showed yesterday, um, we really just edit um, the pieces of the image that we know we're gonna need. So our light is still visible up here, but yeah. this image is gonna be cropped at around here, so we're not too worried about that. We also have our foam core base and the bottom of our podium that is still visible. Um, but again, that's gonna be cropped, so we're not worried about it. But it does kind of give you a nice overall behind the scenes of um, how we sort of had this staged. Yes, so. exactly, Tim. They're really helpful if you play with the blending modes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, that is our final image and how it lived within the feed. I think that one actually did pretty well. People seem to like the 80s one in particular. Yeah, um, it's a cool car. Well, we do have a little bit more time <laughs> until the design feedback. So I can get into one other image, which maybe we'll wrap up afterwards after we've looked at all of your design challenges. Um, so I think we can get into the present day one, which had a bit of a different um, editing experience and a bit more kind of comping that had to happen. Um, so let's go ahead and open up a file. Sure. So we have present day. There we go. I'm curious to see, yeah, we really didn't do any Oh yeah, I was just checking in the raw, but it looks like we did not do yeah. any edits in the raw with this one either. So we just jumped straight into photoshopping, well, and we, we probably, probably did some did light, lens light lens correction. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, this was our final image. Again, we're not too concerned about the pieces that we know we're going to crop out. You can see the base of our table here, as well as the podium that we had this pedestal on. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that stuff ends up being cropped out. It might be fun too, even just to take another peek again at um, the website behind the scenes for this one, just because you can see the distance and how ridiculous. Yeah. Do we have that there? Great. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's just 
really silly, right? <laughs> so yeah, you can see there's like a light coming up here, which is neutralizing the shadow of this floating orb so that we don't yeah. get like a little circular thing. Light on, actually, if you move your head a little bit, you can see the light on the floor. Oh yeah. There we Whoop. go. <laughs> you can see the light moving And then we up. have like a little sawhorse here. We have got a box that just gave us just the right height. We have the GoPro just taking some behind the scenes, but there's a really large distance between the car and the set so that we can make it really large and um, fill, fill the frame. Mm -hmm. But and these are paper um, foam core shapes covered with uh, colored papers and just a little styrofoam ball. Mm -hmm. And even with this little tunnel here, we can see it's kind of just cut off on the side, but we wanted there to be some depth there. And this is actually a, the main part of the comping where we um, have that tunnel appear to sort of go in infinitely. So we yeah. didn't want to do that in real life because we didn't have enough space. So yeah. we just had a, a sharp end there that we comped out. So you'll see that in this file. Yeah. So again, we'll take away all of these edits and you'll see the craziness of the very be beginning image. Yeah. So this I, I is think it's good. To, again, these are not things we share with a client, but since we're friends here, we're going to share them with you. <laughs> um, but I think it's really good to see when you know um, where you want to land and you have some experience with this, you're not going to get stressed when you see that your image, you know that you have the pieces that you need mm -hmm. to bring into Photoshop and clean up and that you're going to be able to successfully composite all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here again we have that base layer and as I mentioned before we shot these two different plates so that we had a really crisp background and that really sharp car. So this is our background layer so all of these pieces are you know nice and sharp and then we've comped in our foreground car layer which again is just kind of masked out here um, and placed in. And so then you know the first thing that we want to do is make sure that that pedestal is nice and square, which it is a little bit off. So we've duplicated that area and just kind of rotated the whole thing. So I'll show you what it looks like without the mask because you can see <laughs> mm -hmm. where um, the rotation is. You can see where all of these lines have sort of been um, you Should know, turned over. Should we talk a little over. bit about how we create our masks? Oh yeah. I mean, it's a, you've seen our mask can sometimes be crazy like yeah. this one. <laughs> um, or but they can be, you know, ways. really sharp. Sometimes we can use pen tools, sometimes mm -hmm. we paint it in, um, but we're always masking. Yeah, I feel like with <laughs> this one, how we ended up kind of approaching it was really just getting super close and with the brush tool, yeah. just kind of painting in the mask where it was needed. Um, so, you know, this whole area was just kind of masked out, but we did end up leaving the reflections that were inside of the car mm -hmm. because those, you know, you can't really tell that it was rotated there. Yeah, and that's actually, again, the difference between real and um, maybe just a digital collage is that we do have that nice distortion that, that is real in the, um, the glass of the car. Mm -hmm. But yeah, often using the pen tool is always the best way to, I think, to have um, a really sharp mask. Um, since this background is, um, you know, pretty, it's a, it's a large field of color, we didn't feel like it was super necessary to have a super sharp mask because um, the background color on both layers is the same. So we're using, it's, it's a pretty clean, um, clean transition between the two layers. Yeah. Um, but you know, if, if you were cutting this car out and putting it on a background of a different color, you'd really want to use the pen tool and like get super close to that edge there. Um, one trick I also like to do with pen tool is um, once you have your mask and you've gone around, you can um, contract the mask by um, like two pixels and then paint out all of the excess. So it really helps with that like tiny white halo that you sometimes get around the image that you're um, pen tooling yeah. if you want like a really clean um, collage. Yeah. So, you know, the next layer is just kind of cleaning up again all of our little imperfections on the pedestal um, using a mixture of clone stamp and patch tool um, and just kind of cleaning up those edges, which I'm going to do a little bit more of here. I do have to say, sometimes I, I start with a mask a little differently and I'll use like colors left. Mm -hmm. um, and other, yeah, there's just a few ways to get to that same Yeah, spot. or you can do like a color range mask mm -hmm. or a channels yeah. mask yeah. Um, and use that as a way. Often when I'm pulling in um, like lettering or something that's in black and white, I'll mm -hmm. do a channel mask yeah. to select, um, you know, the, the dark areas and then you can keep kind of that, um, the texture that you may have gotten from like lettering or something like that. There are many ways. There are many ways. So I'm just going in here and doing a little bit of additional cleanup with the clone stamp. Um, just really kind of hiding that paper edge. 
Ooh, we are getting close to the design feedback. Oh yeah, all right. Well, I might pull up, see how much editing I can do before then. We have about 30 more seconds until we get into that Discord daily creative challenge and check out how you guys use patch tool on your selfies. Here. Oh, see, this is an example of why it's helpful to have a whole image that you're editing from. I just tried to use the patch tool here, and I'm pulling from the wrong layer, so it's not working. Um, so I have to find the base layer for that, which looks like it's this one, and pull the patch tool from there. There we go. So now hmm. that's working. Oh, but this one's on a different layer. So we'll go back to the clone stamp. Oh, I've got to get this loaded up. All right, all right. So it looks like it's time to check mm -hmm. out what you guys have submitted on the Daily Creative Challenge. So we have right, um, Discord gonna, pulled up. Yep, we're just waiting to. Oh, maybe I'll pull that. it up here. Yeah, do you have. Cool. All right, let's go to Current Challenge and see what you guys have. I'll start. See if you can get these to load. Mm-hmm. And I still have mine breaking away. Is yours coming up? Um, not just yet. Let's see if I can log into the internet one more time. I will try it on my, I have the app pulled up. Sorry, we are so excited to see these. So. That's my email, by the way. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I guess some people have some, some real surprises in there. <laughs> We're looking at... Oh, here we go. Great. Okay. Oh, oh awesome. Oh, wonderful. Oh, this is great. That's okay. a very nice selfie. Wonderful. All right. So it looks like this is the original image on my computer. And let's look at your... All right, so you've managed to get rid of all of that background noise Great. and get a nice, even background. It looks like you've also kind of softened your freckles up yeah. a little bit, which you have done a nice job, but you're still keeping some of your skin texture there. Um, I think one thing to be mindful of, especially when you're kind of pulling from areas with hair, it is really challenging to do patch tool too close to anything really detailed. You can kind of get this little halo happening, so just be mindful of pulling um, from an area a little bit away from your hair, and then maybe you can even just go in with the clone stamp and kind of get those areas between the flyaways um, and sort of even that out. But this kind of does give you like a nice halo around, yeah, which I don't even Yeah, it gives a mind. nice glow, for yeah. sure. But that is a real thing, mm -hmm. yes. Just wanna look at the original sort of one more feels time. feels yeah, like with is, the patch tool, it's blending or blending This is around. challenging, because you have your hair here over this kind of really heavy, dense background area. So it looks like you've pulled from this side of your image, which oh, is really good. I think my internet went down, that's why. Sorry. All right, well, I got it going here. Great. All right, let's see what else we have. All right, so this is the original image. It's like you have kind of a textured wall behind you and a little bit of patterning okay. that's happening. Um, and then let's look at your final. Oh, really nicely done. This is super smooth. Yeah. I feel like you've even just made the paint on the wall look a little bit nicer. Um, it looks like you, you know, really managed to avoid yeah. getting any of that haloing around your hair, which is great. So can great. I actually tell, did you clean up your hair? Here? Should we do a little back and forth again? Look at that. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Open that does. Once, um, also very nice selfie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, and so this person has worked with the selfie that Voodoo Val ended up um, submitting. Oh, I actually great. don't have the original image here, but whatever you've done looks really nice. Yeah, that looks real smooth, and the hair, there's Yeah, no... you've like really yep. gotten the hair to be super crisp. Um, I like that you've kept some texture on the wall here. Well done. All right, so let's take a look at this one from Samzilla. This is the original image. Uh, ooh, you have nice hair highlights I'm into it. Mm -hmm. um, see the pretty foggy background here. You actually don't have a ton of space to kind of work in here. So let's see what you've done. Okay. In the oh, this is the, all right, this is okay. the original. I see what you've done. <laughs> Just so okay. I can look along with you all. Mm -hmm. So it looks like this is taken in the car. Oh, so you've done a really nice job kind of making oh, wow. that sort of foggy sure. and clean. 
You have you gave yourself a really nice little atmosphere there. That's great. This kind of reminds me of those like mall portraits where you have like the gradient foggy background. I'm really into that like atmosphere yeah. that you created in this. Um, I really patching. like it. Oh wow. I think in this case also having that irregularity in the color um, is yeah. like a really nice mood. It feels good. Mm -hmm. Good job. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, imitating. All right, so this is the original image. Mm -hmm. Very cute. At the beach, looks nice. And, and then you've really at... done a nice job. Yeah. Oh, where's the... oh. Is this the original or the retouched? I don't know if you... I think these look the same. Are I these think the same? You might not be loading. Actually, let's hop on over to my computer real quick. Yeah, so we've got this one. So we've really. Oh, wait. <laughs> ah, okay. Looks like you've added some, like, yeah, nice you've brightening definitely added some really good your color image. here. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and flip back and forth. I think you've smoothed out the background and maybe some skin. But I really love the color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It would be really interesting good. to see if you could bring that sort of sandy texture into, um, yeah, you know, a deeper sort mm -hmm. of infinite background and play Beautiful. with the pastel more there. But, but you really brought yourself to the foreground, where, mm -hmm. as in the original, it's kind of a flat image. So nice job there. And let's see here, retouching using patch tool. Oh, great. So this is fun because we've got them side by side. Oh, Thank you good. for doing that. So you are set against a door and you remove that door. And what's interesting is that you still have some of those like nice colors. So it, it, it doesn't, we don't know quite where you are, but it does have a nice color relationship to the next mm -hmm. rest of the image. Oh, you've also removed your hand? Is that, did you oh. cop in your own hair? You've done a very convincing job of adding in your hair here, because it looks like maybe you, oh yeah, you clone stamped. I can see yeah. this area of your hair and brought it over here. So well done there. Um, and it looks like you kind of just um, got that background to be pretty seamless over here. So you got a little bit of compositing mm -hmm. in there too. Well done. Yeah, good job. And I like this little halo that's oh, happening so as well. Fun. Okay, so then we have, um, I'm not sure what we've got here except for a cute butterfly image. And then this is retouching patch and clone tools and original. Okay. So the original, that's where we can see there's butterflies in the background mm -hmm. and some uh, a logo on the sweatshirt and taking those all out, it's great. Oh, yeah, I see. I didn't even know. This is like one of those magazine things where you have to figure out the thing that's different. I did yeah. not even notice that you had the logo out on the sweatshirt, yeah. but you did a nice job Looks there. Looks good. I see that you felt the hair a little bit here, mm -hmm. too, which is nice. And then here you changed the color tone. And I think in this case, like, um, the color feels very much at home um, with the background. But if you are isolating and rotating the image, I can see why you would want to bring out some more highlights. Okay. Oh, you guys have a lot of entries. That's great. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at Are we with this one. Jay Lewis. Okay. This is a good wow. Selfie. Okay. Well, it's a selfie, I guess. Someone took this, obviously. Yeah. But um, this is really interesting. Okay. So taking out all of that background and, and setting against the wall. I would say um, with this, I think it's really, really great. I think a real challenge with filling this much space is maintaining that same, um, we have the pattern that shows like a depth and then we have a pattern here which really reads like a wall. So there might mm -hmm. just be a little bit more that could be done to even out that pattern, but all in all, I can see that you've really isolated that image and that's a lot, a lot of work to fill mm -hmm. and it's looking pretty good. I think yeah. one other thing that you can maybe try to kind of keep that depth and also maybe hide the fact that you've adjusted the pattern is adding um, a little dark gradient yeah. that comes from the back to kind of like maintain the fact that it's an illusion of this space going back if you don't want it to look like a flat wall. I agree. Um, or even keeping in um, some of those shrubs or bushes on the side, but then just kind of extending the walkway all the way back so that you don't see the windows of the store um, just to maintain that illusion of depth. Okay. And here we are with this one. This is the before image. So we can see that you're in a room. We can see the light pole. You have a cute glow on your face. And I can see you kept that in this second, which is really nice. Um, and you were able to smooth out and remove some of the stuff 
in your room. Mm -hmm. nice. You did a nice job there, keeping it all really even around yeah. your hair, especially. And also some really nice color changes if you look at them um, top to bottom. So you took out the patterning too. It is like the magazine game, right? <laughs> so here you took out the um, patterning behind, and I actually really like. Um, I like it. I like you set against a flat. And I yeah. actually like, I think you took this on a screen so it has like a little blue glow, but I really like that light and Ooh. the contrast of that with the warm sort of neutral toned background. It's really nice. Look what Chad did here. He took Whoa. a picture of Val. I believe this is Val. <laughs> she looks amazing. And gave her a Whoa. really great environment. That's super <laughs> you fun. You have gone above and beyond yep. on that patch tool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was this original image with the purple already? Am I not knowing about this Halloween oh, edition of Oh, yeah, this was the before. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, no, we have before here, right? So we've just put her in a world. We, we put, put her, her in a world. In a That's kind great. of purple 80s world, actually, mm -hmm. with those coloring. I love those flames. That's I feel fun. like we can all go back to Tim's comment about the flames and work that out with here, but I like how kind of spindly they are. And you've Cute. done a nice job of masking here. Yeah. So you can use the pen tool to cut her out and put her in this world. Very sweet. Okay, great. And so, <laughs> Darina, we're going to look at, so you have a pretty dark selfie. So you're really going to want to bring out some some light to this one. And I think you wanted to clean up the back wall, and you did a really good job with that. So I can really see you now, and you're looking good, and I really like the smoothness of the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you clean up anything extra on your clothes? Oh no, you just kind of, you brought some yeah. light out in your clothing. Yeah. Kept the really shadow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also did a little bit of editing on your freckles. Yeah. And kind of smoothed out your skin, which looks really great. Looks great. Well done. Yeah. It's very natural. Okay, so this one is a Felipe before, Gomez. Hi. before. So, cute photo, we've got all this stuff in the background and cords, and let's see where you landed. Great, okay, so you didn't take out the cord entirely, but you definitely cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. um, the wood grain still seems pretty believable and intact. I can see this is great, smoothed out. I think hair is so challenging, it really mm. is. So we kind of have an abrupt line here that might just need a touch more finesse and again when the patch tool gets really close to something super textured it can go a little mm -hmm. haywire but i think this is a really good a I good a nice job. oh and your hair really is that abrupt right there so it's a cute bob yeah <laughs> i think one thing also with this one um where you have that really dark line in the wood um that was kind of cleaned up from the cord uh, if you go back to her um, yeah. before Im or after image, I guess. Sure. Um, you can also use the patch tool to bring that kind of dark line, c select that whole dark area um, and move that over to an area in the wood grain that's a little bit more subtle so you don't have that really dark line yeah. um, coming in next to you. Although it doesn't really bother me. It does mm -hmm. look natural and nice, but just mm -hmm. something to try. All right, let's right. see. And Dan Designer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I love a side by side, thank you. Yeah, well, these are actually both oh, these originals. Are the before. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we've got a sweet picture that's a little back, backlit, and then this one um, that might feel a touch busy in the background. So let's see where we landed. Oh, that's super interesting. So now it's like sort of more of a surreal space when we took out all of the um, plant life mm -hmm. um, behind your trees. And in this one, sorry to be jumping back and forth so much, we took out this here. So good. That's great. Yeah, I would love to even see the image on the left um, brightened mm -hmm. up in your face yeah. a bit more since we do have that sort of surreal space where you don't really know which direction the light Wait is coming a minute. from. Is this real? Is this a 10 year old did this? This is impressive. Can we just give a round of applause? <laughs> very good. Very, very good. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, that is next? impressive. Okay, here's another one from Aurelia. Is that right? <laughs> you had six minutes to do this. Okay. Okay. Well, good for you for taking it on. Oh, you did a really and nice job. I think job. you did a really nice job. It's mm -hmm. crazy how actually the, the depth of the original photo, it feels like you're just up against a back wall. Like just making those changes makes it feel like the in, you're in, in an entirely different room, which yeah, is really cool. For sure. I think that feels great. You've done a nice job around your hair, mm -hmm. getting up those lines. Um, Oh yeah, even just bringing in that dark color or kind of masking out that dark color on the bottom right. Um, you don't really see very much of a trace of it against your arm, so that's great. Yeah. 
And this is funny. I think we were seeing a little bit of this before, but I didn't recognize what I was looking at. So we're taking the sweet picture of that, and then she's just part of the butter. Oh. <laughs> so you've taken all of this out? Okay, so the chat, it's a real, I mean, like, adorable. Great. Um, <laughs> I really, the only thing to look out for, um, it seems silly to even say, because it's such a, a fun little thing, is to have the repeat pattern in the wall. Sometimes that can just make it feel like you stamped it. Mm -hmm. Although it can otherwise. also kind of look like the wallpaper or the, yeah, um, you know, the, sure. the texturizing paint that's used. So I really don't even mind it there. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's check this one out. Bob Sands. Let's see what you've done here. Oh, this is a pretty wild image. Yeah. Is this an image of an image? Because the reflection that, of, yeah. I can see the reflection of you there, which is like pretty wild looking. Oh, perhaps that is the case. It's a photograph of a photograph. Oh, all right. Maybe. So you're taking sure. away, oh, this is like a whole little meta moment where you're yeah. taking yourself away from the photo and making it a photo once again. Um, so it looks like you have used the patch tool here. I do see a few little traces of where you kind of painted in this area. So I do feel like um, one thing, if you don't have, um, if you pull up the after image there, sure. if oh, you don't after. have, so sorry, yeah, if you don't have a really smooth area to yeah. pull from in the patch tool, sometimes what I like to do is just make the canvas a little bit bigger, or just pull in a layer yep. that has the texture that you want. So in this case, maybe it would be like a smooth kind of painted wall if that's what you want to go for, and then you can pull the patch tool into that texture if you don't have what you need in the image itself to pull from. So that could help you kind of smooth out this area. Um, and you can really just do those edits on top of what you've already done, um, and then even just use that fade tool um, to get it to feel really nice and smooth. Yeah. All right, Great. we got more. Oh, this is an illustrated one. I love that. Oh, how fun. Oh, do you think it's a mural? That's oh. a great idea. Oh, I love yeah. that you clean that up. Yeah. I feel like it's so nice working with patch tool on uh, a flat, even color. It's like a very satisfying, clean um, way of editing, so it looks like so you've done a really nice before. job there. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Really clean that up. Good job. I did a nice job. I mean, you have this really kind of harsh line by the hair, so it looks like you've done a nice job kind of just painting that in mm -hmm. or using the patch tool entirely. I'm not sure what, if you've done a combo of the two to keep that really nice and flat. So it looks like a perfectly clean mural now. Yeah. Well done. Great. Oh, oh I that's think everything. we've reached the end. All right. Okay. Well, I do believe this challenge uh, continues, so be sure to keep you know, submitting, um, yeah. and then we'll get to more of these tomorrow. And really wonderful, wonderful um, outing for everybody here. I'm, I'm very impressed with the work. <laughs> yeah, so since we do have still another 15 minutes, yeah. um, I'm maybe just going to get back into that edit that we were working on sure. um, with the Mercedes-Benz project, and we can wrap up our live stream with this image and hopefully get through all the rest of them. So maybe I'll go through a little bit more quickly so we can finish it up before and our also, time is up. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> There's some real fun uh, comments in chat. <laughs> it's so great that you all, it really seemed like you all had a good time working on that, and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, so looking at this, um, what we finished doing right before the creative challenge was just kind of cleaning up that pedestal. We already rotated it. We comped in the two different layers of the car and the base layer. Um, so now we have all those little things cleaned up. Um, and then one thing here that we sort of left ambiguously in the sketch um, was this sort of faded out um, horizon line. So that was something that uh, was more of like a subjective choice yeah. in the final. <coughs> um, but we me. just sort of wanted to fade that out. So what we've done actually is just kind of We went done back and forth stamp. for a minute on that <laughs> one, right? Not quite sure whether we wanted a hard line. We have so many hard lines in the image. Yeah. Um, so this is really just taking the, the clone stamp, or you could even use the, a faded patch tool for this, mm -hmm. and just covering up that shadow a little bit, um, sort of like butting it right up against the brightness of this um, base color. Yeah. So it's just a little bit faded. You can still see the line, but it's just not as harsh as it was before. Yep. And um, there are a few other little areas. So it looks like um, this is just a combined layer of um, all of these edits so far. And then we have um, a few extra little cleanups that were done. So actually, why don't I just kind of show you how those were done. So I'm just making uh -huh. a um, flattened layer of all of these edits so far. We'll leave this one as it was and show you how well, we would so clean this up. You really often do this, I think, because you are using the patch tool a lot. Sometimes mm -hmm. I will just create a separate layer for 
clean up and label it as such. So we, we even amongst ourselves have slightly different ways. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, since we have that big flat yellow color, it's super easy to just kind of bullet patch tool and it is instantly fixed. Mm -hmm. And then we do want to kind of clean up this area. So I think if we use the patch tool, I'm not sure if the lines are going to perfectly line up. No, it's pretty close. No, yeah. And then I might just want to take the clone stamp and, and then clean, clean that clean up that a tiny up. bit. Yeah. This is also something, you know, you can maybe do it with um, liquify as we showed before, just kind of really slightly adjusting that line. Yeah. That's a little bit wonky there. Oh yeah, That's thanks quicker. for answering there. They are toy cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're what, one forty-third of the size. So yeah, they're about, so you we know, had their big. real toys in the it's studio the and hand. created the sets with them in mind. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a nice little space. You can see there's like a little kind of fold or imperfection in the paper. Mm -hmm. So we can, again, use that patch tool. I'll show you how a fade might sort of help clean up that area. Yeah. I'll leave it somewhere in the middle so we still get that nice paper texture in there. Yep. And then let's just see if there's anything else before we get to the whole tunnel. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's like a little dent there. Ahead. Yeah. So any little imperfection. I think we shared before we hopped over to the challenge, like how the photo, you know, when we knew that we had what we needed to finalize, but it, it by no, you know, it just did not look perfect at all. I'm just getting all those extra little things that we missed on the first round. It looks like this might just be like a little speck on the lens oh, or like a speck I think we on. we just have five more minutes. Oh, so okay. maybe we can, even I'll just run through the yeah. rest of these layers pretty quickly yeah. um, before we wrap up and then this oh, is our and last day. Yeah, so. and it's been <laughs> so wonderful spending time with you all. Please do follow along with us on Instagram at Party of One Studio. Studio. Um, and stay tuned because we have a wonderful day here today. Eric will be back and we have a challenge announcement from I think Sam Anderson, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And then, yeah. You so guys stay tuned for Eric. Stay tuned. All right. Well, since we're just going to do like the easy breezy cooking show version of yeah. this, I'm going to go to the layer that already has all these. <laughs> so we've just kind of patch tooled and clone stamped out all those little imperfections. Um, we got that fishing wire out. And um, again, like the 80s image, we're going to do a nice little kind of um, blurred out moon shape here to keep that consistent across all the different images. So we've taken um, a duplicate layer of that moon, um, created a nice sharp mask so that all of our blur is only affecting that space. Mm -hmm. um, and that blur is applied to this um, copied layer of the moon. Added a little bit of curves just to pop that contrast and then given it a bit of a yellow tint overall. And again, all of these layers are just being, um, uh, just affecting the moon. So we have that layer mask going there. Yeah. And then I think the biggest thing with this image was making it feel like that tunnel would sort of continue on forever. So I can show you the final there. Yeah, we'll <laughs> I'll just scooch it up ahead. for you to see. That took that took quite a few steps to get there. <laughs> but, but I think it's fun usually, to see. You know, so we knew we had the color we wanted, right? Mm -hmm. um, we knew we had the pieces we needed, but like we are actually that's a real Photoshop moment. Yeah, and this is kind of almost just sort of painting in that that bottom line and clone stamping in this original color so that we have that really nice infinite kind of tunnel that's going deep in. And then we've also just popped that like that little dark area inside the tunnel to give it a bit more depth um, yeah. with curves. Um, so, and as well as like cleaned up some of the tape and just kind of wonky edges here that are butting up against this other color. Yeah. And the final thing is color, which we have done in all of these to just really kind of bring this image um, to a nice place and have it really look good along with all the, yeah. all the other photos. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nora, for following along with us both <laughs> days. Oh, yeah. So just quickly going through this, I'm not sure how much more time oh, we, we just have. have. like two oh, minutes. We have two more minutes. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll zoom through this. <laughs> um, so on the pedestal, yep. we added a nice little yellow pop just to kind of match it with the yes. white of the moon. So yep. it felt really consistent. Yep. Um, and then this is, I think this is sort of more of a just like subjective little extra color edit. We've just duplicated mm -hmm. these deeper colors here. Um, you can see our like crazy little mask here. Um, and just kind of duplicated it and put a soft light yeah. uh, opacity 41 over that just to kind of pop those colors and make it feel a little bit richer and yeah. deeper. Sometimes we're a little intuitive when we do these last little bits, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, just wanted to give a little bit more depth. 
Mm -hmm. And then again, just making all of our colors feel really good. Usually we bring mm -hmm. up all of our images at once and we like to look at them and say, okay, do we have any do colors we... that need to be consistent across everything? Yeah. Um, are there colors we wanna you know, make a little bit brighter or soften or yeah. make more aligned? And, look, and, and you mean bringing up all of the images yeah. together so that we have a similar intensity of color, mm -hmm. right? So in this project, for example, I'll just bring back up the... Yeah, oh, I have it um, up on mine. Mm -hmm. well, here we go. Oh yeah, go for um, it. You know, we have these yellows that are pretty consistent. So we're using the exact same paper color here. So just and making sure in our make sure. Yeah, those look yeah, good. and guess what? Guess what, are I think it's time done? for us to go. Oh wait, last thing, curves. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a pretty quick version of how we've edited that image. Um, and you know, yeah, our whole process for how we like to work with clients. Um, and show our set designs and our sketches and our process for you know creating these these images and then of course editing them um, yeah. to their final state. Um, thank you so much for joining us yes. on these two days. Thank it's you been so great much. It's um, been wonderful. joining in with you and talking to you on the chat. Yeah. Um, stay tuned for what we have coming up on the rest of the day. Um, our live stream is out, but there will be another segment with Sam Anderson coming up and then with Eric Sue. Yes. Um, those of you on the chat will be familiar with him. I think he's yeah. a regular, so yeah. I'm sure he's excited to get back. Yes. And thanks everyone Thank again. You. <laughs>